Christopher Columbus and his crew were proud and excited when they reached land. They thought they had crossed the mighty Atlantic Ocean and found Asia. They felt sure that now gold and rare spices from the Indies were within reach. They thought that the king and queen would reward them for their courage and for making Spain the most powerful nation in Europe. They told each other, when we get back to Spain, we'll be rich. They had no idea that the people they would soon meet had never before seen Europeans. Columbus's men followed him onto the wooded island. The people of the island did not fit the descriptions of people in Asia, but Columbus was still convinced that they had reached their intended destination, declaring, we made it to the Indies. He named the people of the island Indians. But things did not work out quite as Columbus and his men expected. The so-called Indians did not seem to have much gold beyond what they were wearing. The only gold Columbus saw was the jewelry worn by these native people. Columbus gestured to them to try to learn where the gold came from. They pointed off in the distance toward other islands. So after trading objects from their ships for the gold rings, Columbus and his men prepared to sail onward. The friendly natives helped him gather fresh fruit and clean water. Just before leaving, Columbus gave the island a name. He called it San Salvador. Columbus took the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria farther west through the warm blue-green waters. They found more islands, passing many and landing on a few. They lowered their sails once more off the coast of a larger island, which Columbus named Hispaniola. There, Columbus told his sailors, we will continue to explore tomorrow. Right now, I am weary. I will rest in my cabin. Wake me up if there's anything I need to know. But the sailors, too, were relaxed and sleepy in the warmth of the sun, and they fell asleep on the deck. A breeze came up, and the waves began to wash lazily against the side of the Santa Maria. Then the waves became stronger, and slowly they began to move the ship. Still, Columbus and his crew slept until suddenly crash, the Santa Maria struck the huge, sharp rocks off the coast of the island. Columbus and his sailors awoke in a hurry. They rushed to look, but they were too late. They saw a large gaping hole in the side of the Santa Maria. Their ship was sinking. All they could do was to signal the Pinta for help, gather everything together and hope to move to the other ship. Columbus's flagship the Santa Maria sank slowly into the calm blue-green waters that had seemed so safe and peaceful. As it did so, friendly people from the island came paddling out in canoes and generously helped move whatever could be saved from the ship onto the shore. Columbus had lost one of his three ships. Still, he felt he would return to a hero's welcome in Spain if he could just find gold. He noticed that the people who had been helping him wore more gold than the people on the other islands he had visited, so when he asked them, using gestures and movements, they signed to Columbus that their gold came from the high, heavily forested mountains in the center of their island. At last, Columbus had found a source for gold. He would start a gold mine in the mountains of Hispaniola. The natives and the Spanish sailors brought wood from the wrecked ship ashore and built a fort. Columbus chose some of his men to remain there while others returned with him to Spain aboard the Pinta and the Nina. In preparation for their journey back to Spain, 
he traded objects from his ships for some of the natives gold jewelry and he put the gold jewelry into a chest to take back to Spain. Columbus and his sailors gathered unknown fruits and brightly colored tropical parrots to show to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. The journey home was stormy, and more than once the men thought they would not get home alive. At last the storms ended and the two ships reached Spain. The families of the sailors were overjoyed that their husbands and fathers had lived through the adventure. They danced in excitement when they saw the chest full of gold, telling one another, We'll all be rich! We'll all be great lords and ladies and live in palaces! After a long journey, the group reached the palace of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. Columbus told them his story and gave them the treasures that he had brought back to them. King Ferdinand, who had been so difficult to convince, now smiled and congratulated Columbus and his men. Queen Isabella, who had always been friendlier than King Ferdinand, laughed and smiled and applauded throughout Columbus's story. And when he showed them the gold, the royal couple was thrilled. You have done all that you promised, they said. Naturally, when Columbus told them that he wished to go back, King Ferdinand said, Of course! You will return to Hispaniola as governor of the island. You will be in charge of all the western lands that you have claimed for us. And this time, we will give you many ships to command, not just three. But first, you must rest and spend time here as our guest. Meanwhile, Columbus thought, all I have worked for and dreamed of all these years has come true. I'm a friend of the king and the queen. I'll be rich and important. I will be famous as the man who found another way to Asia. <laughs> 